Nine months ago, I uploaded the video Onimai More Than Fan Service. And statistically speaking, you come from that video. Like, that is the reason you're watching this one. Because these second channel videos don't reach anyone except my core audience on average. Especially lately, since they've been extremely unmarketable because of the things that people make me rant about. Yada yada. The point is, nine months ago, I got a video that got... Uh, 270k views, that's what it's at now, it's going to inevitably hit 300k. And that boosted me from 1,000 subscribers to 5,000 subscribers in one fell swoop, specifically around 5,200. And I decided to set a goal for myself uh, on Twitter where, you know, few people could see it, but I, I set a goal for myself of hitting 10,000 subs by the end of 2023. It's currently December 17th, and I do not have that many subs. In fact, I am at 5,800. And because it's the final month of the year, I've been doing a lot of introspection lately, as it were. Uh, and specifically, I feel like I'm near a breakthrough, but it's, it's like I'm near one. I'm at the verge of one, the cusp of one, but I'm not quite there yet. There's still something I need to realize before I reach that breakthrough. Now, obviously, because it's just a hunch I have, uh, it could totally be a mirage, an oasis... Uh, in a desert that seems to be there, but when you get closer, is actually just the sun reflecting its rays oh so specifically to delude you into thinking that this is the way things are. But nonetheless, that's how I feel, where for the past, uh, I'd say since, specifically since uploading the V2 video, I feel like I've had, I've been at a mental impasse uh, a, a stage of mental stagnation in my YouTube career where I guess uh, in some ways it is marked by demotivation, but more than anything, this feeling of being stuck in one spot and unable to move forward in the YouTube metagame, which perhaps is in itself feeding the demotivation. Because, you know, I really should be working more than I do, in, you know, every day. I should be working eight hours a day consistently. But obviously, or I guess not so obviously if you're just looking from the sides, but if you're a YouTuber and see how often I put out videos, at what length and what quality, yeah, you probably picked up on the fact that I don't work a full eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, as I definitely should be doing. And, you know, the fact that I'm not really going anywhere with this YouTube stuff is, yeah, probably part part of the reason. Because I am capable of putting a shit ton of work into a video in a short span of time. I did it during the Onimai video, and most recently during the Licorice Recoil video, which I sort of forced myself to do, working over a, a the span of a little over a week for definitely eight hours a day at least, on average probably more, let's be real, uh, because I wanted to get it out by a specific date. And yeah, I've just been in this rut, though. And part of the reason is because I, I guess I'm facing more and more the looming sensation of I could very well not make it. Because at the beginning of the year, I definitely had the mindset of, holy shit, the Oni My video got big, I'm on fire, let's just double, triple, quadruple down, it's gonna be great. Now, obviously, that didn't exactly pan out, uh, partially because of the views, but also because it, uh, it took me a month and a half to get the Suzume video out, when it really shouldn't have, and part of that was because of the stress of just blowing up, because I wasn't used to that many people commenting on a single video. Another part of it is because the bind video I had planned at the time didn't really pan out as well, and so I dumped a bunch of time into a video that didn't really see the light of day, and... You know, I, I should have gotten something out way sooner in order to capitalize on my newfound success, but as it stands, the Suzume video of all the stuff I've uploaded since the Onimai video uh, effectively has the least views. The Oceanico video has 200 less at this stage, but it's, it's 
gonna it's gonna surpass it, right? The Suzume video was a flop all in all, and coming right after the Onimai video definitely wasn't a good sign of things to come. And, you know, it being one, two, three, four, five, six, six videos after the Onimai video, it does make me wonder to myself, how feasible is this really? Because if I'm being completely honest with myself, statistically speaking, yeah, I probably won't make it. If we're talking what is feasible and realistic within the YouTube algorithm, uh, the Only My video will be the biggest video I ever make. Now, obviously, I don't want that to be the case, because I hate the idea of having to get a normal job. But there is the, you know, the thought on my mind of how much longer is the current lifestyle I have sustainable? And the answer is, it's currently not. Uh, I mean, there definitely are some lifestyle changes that I do need to make, but, like, how much longer can I keep telling my parents, who currently and very thankfully house me, hey, yo, I'm working on, like, YouTube videos and stories and gaining an online following, yeah, just let me do my thing, uh, in peace. You know, how much longer it, uh, is it until they're like, okay, that was funny, but the joke isn't funny anymore and you need to get a, a real job and go to college and shit. Uh, and I definitely don't want to dump a bunch of money into college when, in my ideal career path, that isn't particularly necessary for anything I want to do, because my ideal career path is make YouTube videos, make novels, put them all online, have people watch them, and then run my business off of patrons who give me money, and, you know, by keeping them happy, I am able to stay afloat. That's the ideal career path, and college has no part in that except to be a leech on my wallet. But, obviously, if we're talking about statistics, the chances of me uh, being able to do this as a job are spectacularly low. And if I do get a full-time job, obviously that will negatively impact my ability to make videos, because having a full-time job is kind of tiring mentally and, you know, maybe physically, depending on the job. And so, after coming home from work, I'm not sure if I'll be in the mood necessarily to bust out Sony Vegas and be like, alright, we're gonna spend three hours editing now. You know, it, not really... Uh, the, it's not really conducive to the best YouTube output experience and whatnot, even if I do, at the end of the day, do find gratification in being able to make these YouTube videos. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because re uh, literally today I rewatched my AnyTube marketing and why the ladder kicks my shins in a video. And I did it m partially because I had forgotten exactly what I said in the rant, but also because my opinions on it have updated, kind of. During that ramble I make about, you know, the nature of, essentially the rant is about the, di uh, the dichotomy between marketable content and good content, and why I think the two don't really intersect exactly, and also why I need to harness the powers of both in order to make it big on YouTube. And I've sort of come to resent marketing, in a way, because YouTube, in some regards, is the hardest job of its nature in terms of gaining an audience. Now, in other ways, it's the easiest, and I'll get into that, but in terms of being the hardest, the reason why is because, first of all, all right, well, just like any other marketing job, you have to appeal to people. You have to give people what they want. But it's further, you know, made more complicated by the fact that there's an algorithm. And that algorithm determines what content is seen to begin with. And the algorithm does its best to give people what they, you know, what people watch and what they are likely to enjoy and watch all the way through. And so if you get analytics up, yeah, that means your video is going to do well in the algorithm, but there still are mysteries to it. This almost cult forms around the algorithm, as other YouTubers have pointed out time and time again, where, you know, it, it serves this mysterious, higher, ethereal spot in the YouTube mythos. We almost 
uh, revere this algorithm in a way. We see it as something much mightier than it is. When, you know, when I think of the algorithm, I think, fuck you, just promote my content already, you son of a bitch. Fuck you. And the reason why is because it makes it a lot harder, you know, uh, and granted, I do seem to be nearing its good graces again, because for the past three videos running, they've had a, a point in time where they it's clear that the algorithm is favoring them, where it's sending it out to people, which is a good sign, obviously. If the, if the video is getting sent to people, that's good, but then it inexplicably drops it at a certain point. And it's because something about the video just wasn't either it wasn't person friendly or it wasn't algorithm friendly. Now, in my opinion, my content has been getting better since the Oni My video, and in fact, the Oni My video isn't one of my best. You know, I, I don't even particularly like the Oni My video. I mean, it's it's a fine video. I don't dislike it, but of all my videos, it's one of the least good. You know, uh, but at the same time. You know, apparently, the current stuff isn't working, uh, working. And the reason why is because, although I said in the AnyTube and marketing rant that I would focus on the latter and try to get better at it, I haven't really been true to my word, you know? I do try on the thumbnails quite a bit and try to make them as clickable as possible. Personally, I'm partial to the Oshinoko thumbnail. I think it's the best thumbnail I've ever made. But even now, I'm, I'm still learning, right? But in terms of the videos, uh, not much has really changed. I should be uh, changing the editing and the pacing such that people will continue watching to essentially retention whore. I don't want to ever do the Mr. Beast editing, though I will if need be, if I get desperate enough. But... You know, I should be putting faster edits near the beginning, and slower edits near the end. I should be focusing on how to keep people's attention as much as possible, with the most attention-grabbing intro. But I haven't really thought about that, because my natural instinct when making a video is to just make it something that I would watch, but I'm a fucking freak to society. I just have my own things that I like, and, you know, I, I have my own preferences. But those preferences aren't other people's preferences, damn it. And I need to make something that just, you know, gets to the point as fast as possible, which obviously I do but then also, you know, is captivating for for a general audience, right? But I don't think about that. I don't try hard enough. And, and furthermore, I should just be putting out more stuff, right? I should have had my current video out a week ago. I didn't necessarily have it scheduled for such, but I could have totally had it out by then. I just didn't work on it enough, you know? Uh, I am getting better about that. I've spent pretty much all day today working on it, except for the parts where I had to go out with my family to an outing, and, you know, I, I had to, I had to show up there, right? But overall, you know, I've spent all my free time today working on the fucking video, and it's, it's going good, right? I've, I'm making good pace for today's efforts. I, uh, I, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm making pixel art for the video. But I also have to ask myself, is it really worth it? I put so much effort into the visuals of the video and making it more stylistic. But what is it really doing? What is it really accomplishing? Because what I like and what makes my videos better to me isn't what makes it better to everyone else. People just want something that'll keep them glued to the screen, that'll make them forget about all the pain of life for like 20 minutes. And, you know, adding in all this unique bullshit doesn't necessarily accomplish that. I guess what it would do is make my fans more loyal, and if I want to eventually switch over to a patron model, uh, funding my content entirely and not have to worry about the algorithm, yeah, that's good. But at the same time, I could also just put out a bunch of second channel videos and that would essentially do the same thing. Although, at the same time, having unique editing does, at the end of the day, give you more subs. 
and that's good, right? But at the same time, I mostly just want to blow up in the algorithm, but the algorithm is an enigma to me. Now, if you're a YouTuber, uh, specifically an anti-tuber watching this, fucking DM me right now. My dis- uh, well, I mean, I guess I won't tell you what my Discord is. But, like, get on- get, go to my Twitter, right? My Twitter is at Lori B-E-N-N-I-N-G-O- or no, H-O-1. Uh, and o Lori spelled L-O-R-I-E. It's a long story why my at is that. But literally just DM me on there. My DMs are open. And just tell me what what to do. Because I know I should talk about popular shows more. I should be writing the trend. My last three, three videos are on Oshinoko, Rent-A-Girlfriend Season 3, and Licorice Recoil. The, oh, my, my, my fucking... My fourth before that was Strangulation Romanticist. Nobody cares about Zari Goto. Except for Zari Goto fans who keep asking when the V3 video is. It's soon. Trademark. But... Those aren't the big seasonals of their respective seasons. Even Rent a Girlfriend was past its peak in relevance. Even if, you know, I, I have an interesting point in the video. Also, also, I've been saying you know way too much this video. I should really, I should really get that under control. I should find new things to say. But... <clears throat> Look, the point is, I'm not making as marketable of content as I should be. And I guess what I've been thinking about doing is, over the next year, right, 2024, I want to make more, first of all, more videos. That's the biggest thing. And I already know what I want my next three videos to be, and I want them all out in a vi at, at a fairly rapid clip. You know, uh, God damn it, I said it again. Delaying one to the beginning of February at most, if possible. Obviously, how likely is this to transpire? Probably not extremely. But I want to put out more videos. Because, listen... If I want this YouTube stuff to work out, I can't keep treating it like I have been. Because I think what I've done, whether I like to admit it or not, is treat it entirely as a hobby. Now, maybe not entirely as a hobby, because sometimes I force myself to work on it when I don't necessarily want to. If it wasn't entirely a hobby, I would just work on it exactly when I wanted to, when sometimes I do force myself to work on it as if it were a job. So I guess in some ways, yes, it is a job. But at the same time, I make the videos I want to make. I am not that influenced by what will blow up, even though I should be way more influenced by that. Because I just make what I, wa what, what I find enjoyable to talk about. But there's so many things that I should talk about that I just don't. I should be trying to get big off of shows that are currently airing and get the best, you know, the, the best video with the best thumbnail with the best title. That will blow up if the show is currently relevant. And I should be doing that. And I should be giving all my time to YouTube. I should be putting my nose to the grindstone and doing that constantly. That should be the number one leech on my time uh, on any given day, frankly. And that's what I should have done a fucking year ago. I should have been doing two videos a month by now, but I don't. And, and you know, maybe not two videos a month all the time, because obviously the V2 video is an hour and 20 minutes long. Okay, maybe I can make... Uh, make room for that one. You know, let it slide that time. But overall, I should, on average, be putting out, at the very least, like 40 minutes of content a month. That about. And I should have been doing that already, but I, I don't. Even though I should. I should be sp sacrificing way more to the YouTube beast. Because at the end of the day, yeah, it's what I want to do. It, it really is what I want to do. 
or at the very least, I want to have a fan base to make art to. I don't even necessarily care if it's super popular or if I'm the biggest anti uh, tuber. I've always envisioned my ideal sub count to be around 400,000 subscribers because that's big. It gives me a ton of patrons, a ton of people who do like what I do, but it's not so many that I feel like I have the world watching me. I just have my niche audience there, and I'm not that big of a deal, and I can just exist on my own, making content for people, occasionally putting out books that people read because I have the right fan base for it, stuff like that. That's the ideal scenario. Uh, but to get there, I need to do a little bit of algorithm whoring, unfortunately. And I guess that gets me to the point that I, I'm very cynical about marketing on YouTube, in a way. I don't enjoy it. I don't like that my videos aren't getting picked up yet. I mean, I guess there's not much I would change about the YouTube algorithm as it is. I mean, there are some things I'd change, but... Like... At the end of the day, yeah, most videos on YouTube have to fail by necessity, because if the algorithm pushes everything equally, nothing blows up, everyone gets two views. So in that sense, no, I'm not suggesting we reprogram the algorithm, but what I'm saying is, I don't understand it. I don't understand how to appeal to it, I don't understand what works for it, I don't understand why my videos that I think are the greatest thing on the earth don't do well in it. I'm sure someone who is actually good at it would be able to tell you, oh, you have to do Le Mis Mr. Beast captions. Okay, but I don't want to sell my soul to YouTube. I want to balance it, but it's looking increasingly like I'll have to swing more in the marketing direction in order to get picked up. So I guess the question is, how much longer is it until I inevitably sell my soul to the, the, the fucking YouTube gods? You know, it's a matter of time, I guess. Uh, one way or another, you just give up your soul to whatever corporation you're working for. And I guess it's the same on YouTube. But obviously, there are people who buck the trend, and I would love to be a Shafrilis if I can. But I'm not sure if I can be. And that's the issue. This was a lot of scattered thoughts, and I'm not sure if I even made a coherent point in the, all of this. But... I just wanted to get it out there and get people's thoughts on it, and if you are a YouTuber with a lot of subscribers, if you have even, like, one more subscriber than me and you know something that I don't about the algorithm, tell it to me now, tell me how it works, and you know what? I'm in Discord servers with YouTubers in them. I might try and get them to collaborate and find out what does well in the algorithm and try and figure this out. Maybe I can run some experiments on what does well. I already have a video planned for a seasonal that's coming out currently. I need to watch it. Uh, and I also need to get my current video out first. So I guess I'll no life that for the time being. I could probably I could probably finish editing uh, editing it tomorrow, honestly. It's a it's a bit of a stretch, but it's not impossible if I just sacrifice all my time and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I can try my hand at that and try to get the video out fucking already. Just get it out. It needs to be out. I need to make more videos. That That's the message of this. Uh, I hate certain things about YouTube and marketing, and uh, I'm definitely at a period of stagnation, but I feel like I'm close to a breakthrough. I guess I'll bring it back there. Uh, at any moment, I reckon I'll figure out what it is I need to do, or I guess find the motivation to get my life in order, to get my YouTube career in order, which will further fix my life in order to get to the point where I can have a career off of this. Also, patron me by.